Hey guys, Abel here back with another video. I fell off the wagon a little bit with video making. I was absent for almost two weeks, but I didn't let it escalate to a month, which is good. And that's handy because that's related to what I want to talk about in this video. So in today's video, I want to talk about three skills that I think all of you will have to learn if you want to succeed on your fitness journey. And the skills that I will talk about in this video are more so soft skills, so not super hard, I guess, technical skills, which also can be important. And if I was to talk about those, then I think I would talk about technical execution with lifts, gauging proximity to failure in the gym, calorie awareness and being aware of the energy density of different foods. And maybe I will talk about those in a different video, but these ones are more so mental skills or soft skills. And I think these are often overlooked, but I think in the long term, these can become just as important as what's the appropriate rep range in the gym or something like that. And if you're new to this channel, maybe you want to know that I often talk about the less glamorous side of fitness and some of those uncomfortable topics that others don't want to talk about as much. And I just like to say how things are. And trust me, if in the long term you want to succeed on your fitness journey, then the things that will often get in your way are things like social pressure, dealing with temptations on your diet, not falling off the wagon during Christmas time and things like that. This was definitely true for my own personal fitness journey. I would say that for the first two or three years, I did not realize whatsoever how important all of this was. For the next couple of years, I did realize it, but I was failing at it big time. And for the following two or three years, I would say that I became incrementally better at all of these things. And today, I'm still not perfect, but I'm in a much better position than I was some years ago. So for a lot of you guys, this will be a lifelong learning curve and a lifelong journey. But just realize that the things that I'm going to be talking about today are super, super important. So with that, the first thing that I want to talk about is the ability to do the right things, quote unquote, right things and stay on the right track even when you don't feel motivated. So I don't want to belabor the point of motivation too much because it's almost becoming a cliche in the personal development space that you can't rely on motivation. But I think that's really true. So I think there are some people who are always motivated and some people are definitely more motivated than others. Someone like David Goggins definitely strikes me as a person who is always motivated. And to be honest, that's why I don't personally follow him or listen to his stuff. I have all the respect for him, but he's not resonating with me because to me, it's like listening to a UFO. It's like, dude, good for you that you're feeling like that all the time, but I myself am not like that. So I need advice that is tailored to mere mortals like myself. So whenever I'm getting myself into anything, whenever I have a goal that I want to pursue, after that initial kind of burst of inspiration, the thing that I'm thinking about the most is how can I get this weak, fallible thing that is me adhere to that goal in the long term? Because I know that I will have bad days, I will have a sleepless night, or I will receive some really bad news that will put me down, and then I really won't be feeling like adhering to my goals. So that's where habits come into play, that's where systems come into play, that's where automations come into play. So to give you an example, an easy example in my case, when I have a sleepless night, so I wake up in the morning, I slept really badly and I didn't sleep enough, I am grumpy, I am not a fun person to be around, I'm thinking all kinds of nasty things, and I have a big spike of hunger and cravings in the morning. So often my first urge when I have a really bad morning after a sleepless night is, I'm just gonna go to the kitchen and I'm gonna be eating all the shit that I can find in my fridge. Now, in my case, that helps that I don't keep a lot of shit in my fridge in the first place. But to be honest, in the past, I would often just go to a grocery store and buy a whole bunch of crap, bring it home, and then start eating it. And by now, I developed this super fancy morning routine, and here it goes. I get out of bed, get into the shower, I brush my teeth, I get out from the shower after five to 10 minutes, then I pop in a nicotine gum, I know, horrible, don't judge me. And I will chew on that for 20, 30 minutes. And by the end of that whole process, I kind of snap out of that zombie mode and I get into a more rational mindset. Now, for some of you, you will have a different recipe and you might have these temptations or less than ideal moments in different situations. So you will have to come up with a different solution. I can't tell you exactly what will be the winner recipe for you, but you will have to have something like this. Because in the long term on your fitness journey, your success will be directly proportional to how many times you can actually stay on track when you don't feel motivated. The amount of times where you will feel motivated 
is correlating with that much less so. And you cannot really build on that in the long term. So that's the first skill, super important. And the second one is, the second and the third skill will be very closely related, but the second one is the ability to be adaptable. Or I could also frame it in a way where the ability to be content with less than optimal progress at times. So the thing is, the easiest way to achieve any kind of goal is if you don't attempt them in the first place, right? Like if you don't attempt something, you cannot fail. That works 100% of the time. A little bit more difficult way to succeed, but still relatively easy, is if you get yourself into something, you start pursuing a goal, and from the get-go, you succeed consistently, everything works out perfectly, the circumstances align just right, and it's success from beginning to end. So let's say, for example, that you start out with a dieting phase, and from the get-go, weight loss is linear, body fat is dropping linearly, no circumstances come up that could derail you, everything is just working out perfectly, and it's smooth sailing from the beginning to the end. It's much more difficult to succeed when everything is not lining up perfectly, which, spoilers, they never will. So maybe you have a sleepless night, like I mentioned, when you're dieting, or maybe you have social events that come up, and you have situations in which you will have to make compromises. And those are the moments when often the big plans just go out the window right away. So staying with the dieting example, let's say that you've been dieting for one or two weeks, and now you're invited to this Italian restaurant where it's all pasta and pizza, and not super diet-friendly foods, the reality is that it's very rare for that one restaurant meal to meaningfully impact your progress in the long term. Because really, what are the potential outcomes? Maybe you do a great job and you stay within your caloric budget, or maybe you will reduce your deficit a little bit, or maybe you eliminate your deficit altogether, or maybe you actually go into a small surplus or a more hefty surplus, like 1,500 calories. Neither one of those scenarios is enough to significantly impact your progress in the long term. I mean, it's literally a drop in the ocean. However, if you then throw in the towel and fell, fall off the wagon for the next week, now that's going to be a problem. And the falling off the wagon process itself is definitely something that we can talk about. In fact, we will in the next point. But I think it all starts with the right mindset. And that is accepting the fact that now maybe you're only going to make 70% of the progress that you can make, and that's okay. I think rationally everybody knows this, but in the moment it can be hard to really apply this knowledge and put it into practice. And at times it may require some self-talk if needed out loud or journaling or some sort of self-reflection, but you really need to get this dialed into your head. I had this struggle a lot and still have it to this day to some extent. And to give you an example, uh, the last time we traveled for vacation, which was in the summer of 2019 before the Rona hit, I was feeling uneasy about the whole thing. So it's like, man, I'm not gonna be working out for a week, won't be able to go to the gym, I'm gonna be eating out a lot. So Jesus, it's high calorie foods and not working out at the same time. It's a recipe for disaster, right? And I had to have this self-talk with myself where I went, you know what, if all these years of being into fitness, working out consistently, being on point with your diet, if all of that is not enough to grant you a week where you don't work out and you have some pizza, man, you have to rethink this whole thing that you're doing because then it's a stupid pursuit. And then I had to go, well, but I know that it's not a stupid pursuit. And then, you know what? You're right. It's going to be okay. So you will have to do something like this at times if this is something that doesn't come naturally to you. And this basically brings me to the final skill that I think is really critical, and that is learning how to fail only somewhat. Or I should say, learning how to not hit rock bottom if you deviated from your plan. So if everything I talked about so far didn't work, so you couldn't stay on track when you were not motivated, you could not apply a healthy mindset, and you could not settle for less than optimal progress at times, and let's say you went to a pizza place and you went way overboard on food and then you fell off the wagon a little bit and for two days you kept overeating and you didn't go to the gym, what will make or break you in that situation is how quickly you can stop. Because the thing is, going way overboard with the food and then staying off track for another two days is not good. However, it is much, much better than falling off the wagon for a week. And if you fell off the wagon for a week, that's still much better than falling off the wagon for a month. Again, I think rationally we all know this, but in the moment we often fall for this what the hell effect. Because our mindset is basically, you know what, I blew this, so I might as well blow this with a nuclear bomb. 
It's a highly irrational mindset and objectively I think we all know this, but in the moment it can be very hard to snap out of this mindset. And I think the thought process goes something like, well, I messed this up already and then I might as well just go all out and go for way more and then it's gonna be somehow easier to get back on the right track and start with a blank slate. Or it could be, well, I'm going to be starting with a blank slate, but I cannot start it right now, right? Because I just created the damage like a minute ago. So at the very least, it will start tomorrow. And if I'm starting tomorrow and this day still lasts, then I might as well go for more. Again, I think objectively, we can all see how irrational this is. And while I really hope that after watching this video, none of you will fall for this again, Unfortunately, I really think that some people just have to experience this on their own skin. So I know that in my case, I went through this so many times and I experienced it again and again. Then the next day when I woke up, I was like, man, clean slate and everything, but it would be so much easier for me now if I didn't go for those 4,000 calories the day before because I thought that I already blew it. And by now, when I'm in a situation where I deviated from my plan and I can feel it in my head that my brain is about to go into full-on self-destruction mode, I can recall these memories of thinking this on those following mornings that, man, I wish I didn't do it. And by now, these feelings and memories are just as sharp as the urges to go for that what the hell effect. And so when this happens, I just go, man, I know you're feeling like this right now, and I know that these urges are stronger than anything, but trust me, tomorrow you will be super glad that you didn't do it. And I have this in other situations too. So sometimes at night when maybe I had one of these deviating from the plan type days, I can feel that I have these urges and then I just go, you know what, let's just call it a day, let's just go to bed, sleep on it, and tomorrow, let's reevaluate this whole overeating thing. And then of course, without fail, the next day I wake up and I'm like, man, it's so great that you stopped there. Okay, so one important thing that I forgot to mention here is what helps me and I think what may help you in situations like this is whenever you feel like your head is going to that place where you think, okay, the damage is done, I might as well go for more, just repeat it to yourself that the damage is not done yet, or at least it can be escalated to an almost infinite degree. You made some damage, but at the moment it's like a splinter in your finger. And what you're about to do now is smashing that finger with a sledgehammer. Is it gonna make things better? Well, no. So just remember this mantra, the damage is not done yet. Whatever you did, it's always better to just stop there because while what you did might be worse than what you could have done, but it's probably still infinitely better than something else that you might be contemplating doing right now. So again, it's a learning curve and it's gonna be a struggle for a while to some of you, but over time it's gonna get better if you listen to the stuff that I said in, the, in this video and if you're willing to learn from those failures in the past. So that's basically what I wanted to say in this video. Those are the three skills that I wanted to mention. I think they are super critical and I hope that they made sense. And maybe in the future, I'm gonna be talking about the technical stuff, you know, the failure proximity, the calorie awareness, all of those things. Those are just as important, but I think if you master these things, then your fitness journey is gonna be more successful and a hell of a lot more enjoyable. So let me know what you thought of this uh, in the comment section, like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next video.